Uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for coming in in our final session, a kind of graveyard slot. That's its unofficial name, I think. But uh, I'm going to talk to you. Um, well, actually, I want to make sure that you're all awake first. So let's have a little bit of audience participation. I'm going to show you a logo. And I want you to put your hands up if you recognize this logo. Or maybe even if you've been in involved with it or if you've had something to do with it. It doesn't matter if you haven't, but I just want to know. So put your hands up if any of you know what this logo is. Oh, interesting. I won't be going out on the roads tonight then. This is actually, well, it has a new cool, smart name because everything these days has to have a short, cool name. And it's called Road Smart. And it's actually uh, the new name for the Institute of Advanced Motorists, which is kind of like, ah, so, you, oh, all right, okay, Doug, Doug recognizes it now. So it's kind of like the next level up in driving, really. Okay, so. Hold that thought, just put it in the back of your brain for a while, because I am going to talk about Learn Moodle. And when I start talking about Learn Moodle, people usually expect me to talk about the Learn Moodle MOOC, which we run every six months. Um, and yeah, that is partly true. I am going to talk about that. But actually, the term Learn Moodle now has broadened out to something more than just that six-monthly MOOC. And it covers a, a whole new program of courses uh, developed by the education team, as Doug says, are in America. But, but it is a good opportunity for me to plug Learn Moodle Basics MOOC. The next one is uh, Janu uh, June the 18th. And uh, you'll be able to sign up soon after Easter in April once we've got our GDPR stuff sorted out. OK, so when we run the MOOC, we're often asked, where can we take our training next? So, so we learn the basics, what can we do next? And there is an answer, and the answer is Moodle Partners. Moodle Partners offer training on various different types and levels, and that is the place to go, and that will continue to be the place to go. But the development, uh, but the education team have found something slightly different. So it's another sort of training that will complement, but not replace, but can go alongside the Moodle Partner training, and, and you can still access it uh, via them. Uh, actually, talking about the, the MOOC, uh, back to that, my daughter is a history teacher, and she's got a Moodle for School site, and she started the MOOC a couple of times, and uh, she's not managed to complete it, which is a shame, but maybe she will in June. And at the grand old age of nearly 29, she's actually started learning how to drive. She got a driving lessons for Christmas, that's her. I made a pose for that. Uh, took me two weeks to get her to pose for a picture. And the education team have actually made the analogy that you could look at the Learn Moodle MOOC as a bit like passing your driving test. You pass your driving test, you get your keys, you're on the road, you know, you know the basics. Uh, like with, with using Moodle, with teaching online. But you very quickly get to realize that there's an awful lot of roads that you need to navigate uh, and you need to have certain skills to be able to, to find your way to your destination. Another question. Does anyone recognize this? Anyone know where this is or what this is? Shout it out. Yeah, its nickname is Spaghetti Junction. It's actually Gravelly Hill Interchange. Um, and actually, I, I watched bits of this road being built from my bedroom window as I was growing up. I'm that old. And my house is just slightly off, off the top, what's that, left there. Um, yeah, so you might find, in fact, that there are different sort of alternative paths that you would need to take or alternative means of transport to get to the same destination. Or you might even need to think outside the box a little bit to your approach to getting to your destination. Um, you need to be aware that some terrains are quite challenging. In fact, for some terrains, you need very, very specific skills. I need to be a different driver in the city as you do in the countryside. And you need to be aware that some things sometimes just cannot be expected. And you just have to, and you're driving as in your teaching, you just have to meet those challenges. It matters where you teach. It matters where you drive. This is actually a road. This is a road in South America. And this is a road in Canada, although, to be fair, it could have been a road in anywhere in the UK in the last few weeks. 
and you need training. So you need training, particularly in driving in the snow. Maybe this person didn't quite get the right training in driving slowly through the snow. This person obviously got a lot of training in driving very fast. And you also need training to be aware of unexpected hazards as you're going along. Now, there are some very good driving manuals, okay? Don't take a picture of that. She doesn't know I photoshopped that picture. There's some very good driving manuals along. But you need, you need more than just the manual. You need more to help you understand the different environments and approaches and experiences as you develop your driving skills, just as you develop your online teaching skills. Of course, Moodle has a very good manual too, the excellent Moodle user documentation. There it is. But as I said, you need more. You need something like the Institute of Advanced Motorists for Moodle. And so this is the Moodle Educator Certification, which the Moodle Education team have been thinking about, developing, and working on. Why? Well, I'm going to suggest three reasons why, or three thoughts that the team had as to why this is useful. And the first one is practicality. Obviously, the way you teach has an impact on which tools that you should master. In Moodle, you need the right tools for the right job. Now, in the Learn Moodle MOOC, we, kind of, we cover this at a very basic level. We say, right, so if you're the kind of teacher who's a presenter, if you, if you just want to give your students materials to read, to watch, if you deliver content, you want to look at the resources in the activity chooser. Whereas if you want your students to get engaged with each other, be more interactive, look at the activities. Now that's a really low level, but what if you don't know that? What if you're not competent in that? What if you've not had that training? I know a history teacher in South London who has a Moodle for School site, who's just started driving actually, who will remain nameless, who is an excellent classroom teacher. She gets her students working together collaboratively. They, uh, they do higher level thinking skills tasks. They're challenged. If you go into this nameless teacher's Moodle for School site, it's actually just full of folders of PowerPoints. Now, that in itself is okay because it's exam classes. They need materials to be able to, to read, download, and revise, sure. But does, she could surely align the way she teaches in class with the way she adds Moodle content, but she doesn't know how. She doesn't have those competencies because I blame the parents, but this is beside that. So research has said that actually, and I'm leading into this now, so according to Educause, and this is the slide that Martin mentioned yesterday, 74% of faculty when surveyed said, yeah, learning platform is really important. In fact, 60% said it's critical. But 50% said, yeah, but it would be better if we had better training, if we knew how to use it better. And 51% were unhappy with the current training. They, so they don't know how to make it better. They don't have those competencies. And what about if you actually just thought a bit beyond your own individual classroom, be it online, blended, or whatever, and if you thought beyond your own organization? What about aligning it to competencies outside, internationally? So, I've um, got some for you here. The European Framework for the Digital Competence of Educators which is a bit of a mouthful, but just like RoadSmart, it has its own short, snappy, cool name, which is Digicomp Edu. And there's the core elements of the UNESCO Pillars of Learning. And I'm not going to tell you what they are, because you can Google them afterwards at the end. And of course, if we could have these in our training, you know, then we, it would head us towards, again, as Martin was saying, UNESCO's Sustainable Development Goal, number four, quality education. Well, that's what the plan is. So the European Framework for the Digital Competence for Educators has only, only actually came out last November. And it is, a, it is what it says it is. It is a framework for educators of digital competences that they should have. And in fact, part of the team is, is presenting on this in terms of mobile learning in Paris this week. And so... Um, the digit, this actually forms the foundation for the content 
of the modules in the Moodle Educator Certification. So the courses are these competencies. So we are basically going to teach digital competencies to educators using Moodle activities. These are the areas of the DigiComp Edu um, areas of learning, areas of competence. You can uh, look it up directly, the direct link there. So for example, there's teaching and learning. I'm doing a workshop tomorrow on collaborative learning. That comes under that area. It's not just teachers' competencies for pedagogical reasons, how they teach. It's also professional competencies, how they react and how they work with each other. So we've got professional engagement there. So one of those might be professional collaboration, working with your colleagues digitally. So in here are 22 competencies, and they're the titles and the content of the modules. So I'll just give you an example of the format, because they all have the same format. They're consistent, okay? And it works like this. So everything has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And a good beginning is with an introduction. So you have announcements, you have a module guide, you're given your learning goals, what's success, and then there's a forum where you can discuss your prior understanding of that particular module or competence. For example, let's take professional collaboration, okay? Um, now, if you haven't ever done that digitally before, if you know nothing, that's fine, because you'll be in a facilitated module with a small group of other people where the facilitator will guide you and you'll learn from the others. So these are facilitated modules and your facilitator will be a Moodle partner. So these are accessed or will be accessed from Moodle partners. And they're currently in development stage. They'll be, um, you know, Moodle partners will be trained and so on. So it's not free, but it will lead on from the MOOC and it will also run alongside other partner training that you can access. So then we move into Act One. Okay, so the team in America, not me, the team in America decided to call these acts, uh, which is a part, it's like a part, part one, Act One, okay? And this is where, and this is like similar to in the MOOC, you experience some activities from the student point of view. So we suggest to you three Moodle activities, tools that you could use to meet that competency. So for instance, if you were learning about professional collaboration, um, you could use database activity. That's pretty good for sharing stuff amongst colleagues. So is a glossary, a slightly lower level. And of course, forum. Forum is very customizable. So we suggest these tools and you access them as a student. And of course, you can also discuss other tools. So, you know, if you don't agree, then open up the conversation. In Act 2, you will then go off into your sandbox course. This, again, is similar to the MOOC. And recreate with your own flavor those activities. Oh, hold on a minute. What if you've never actually made a database activity before? And now you've got to make your own according to your own needs. Uh, well, you are given step-by-step -step instructions. You're given a, a little video tutorial. That's actually that's the only bit that, and a, a few courses, the only bit that I've done. I, the greatest credit goes to the team in North America. And if that's still not enough, for each of these activities, you get um, a skills test, a Moodle quiz, which you can take several times to know, to make sure your knowledge is enough to do this. And if it isn't, or if you still don't feel confident in setting up a database, or it might be a workshop or a lesson, you're sent off to an individual, standalone, kind of self-paced course where you will learn everything you can about that tool. So we do teach tools, but as part of something grander. When you've understood how to make your database activity or whatever, you come back into the facilitated course and then you create your activities and submit them for assessment. And then, 
in Act 3, also known as Part 3, you will then share uh, your best work with the other participants in the course and think about how you could get your students engaged, how they could demonstrate innovation, how it could, they could be responsive and so on. And if you feel particularly that you've made a good activity, you could even share it with the other participants and with the world on MoodleNet, for instance. And then, this is kind of like the end, beginning, middle, end. In the reflection section, it's twofold. So it's not only about you reflecting on your own learning during the module. No, it's also about you giving us your reflections because we need your feedback about the facilitation, about the module, about those three activities in Act 1. Were they the right activities? So that we can make the modules uh, better each time. So they will be continuously updated. Again, this is like the MOOC, you know. We, uh, from 2013, when we first did it, it's changed quite considerably. And that's not only because Moodle versions have changed. So it will be constantly updated based on feedback. So, to summarize, Moodle Educator Certification, which is currently being developed, is facilitated modules, the 22 competencies, but also, as I explained, some self-paced modules that you just go and do on your own for the tools. You'll access it via Moodle Partners. We're using Moodle Cloud, which is pretty cool. And the plan is that it will be continuously updated. New Moodle versions, uh, new improved versions of the modules. Initially, it will be in English, but depending on which partners come on board, we hope to have it translated so it will be in other languages, and you'll be able to get some of them from the second half of 2018. And of course, for reputation purposes, thinking long term, we want to be intimately connected to MoodleNet. So why did I say this is, why did I say this is a little bit different? Um, well, one of the team in America, Bob, has done some research into the trainings offered by other learning management systems or learning platforms, as we call them, like Canvas, D2L, and so on. And they don't seem to look at their users as educators, as teachers. So, yeah, you can have training in the tools, how to make an assignment, how to make a quiz, which we also do. You can have admin training, you can have face-to-face -face or online training facilitated. But we haven't seen any that align with competencies, that are competency-based, that help you meet competencies, international competencies, and using the learning platform, using Moodle. And this, of course, is helping towards our vision, which is to give the world the most effective platform for learning. So it's not just about passing your test and getting the keys. It's much more than that. And if you're interested, or if you want to follow the development and the progress of the project, we've got a, a URL, which is moodle.com slash learn moodle. So please make a note of that, because the team lead, Tom, has actually written an FAQ of all the questions that, that you would ask me if it weren't the end of the day and, and you weren't keen to, to move on. They're all there, moodle.com slash learn moodle. It's a link to our documentation. And also, please come to moodle.org to the Teaching with Moodle forum. This is where we have lots of conversations about using Moodle in teaching. And if you want to ask me, that's where I hang out, or one of the places I hang out as well. So find out more there. Please come and discuss Teaching with Moodle in the Teaching with Moodle forum. Oh, and get your colleagues to join the MOOC that starts on June the 18th. Thank you. And, um, I have a question. I'm still, I'm still offering the jacket, by the way. Is that anyone's jacket? <laughs> Black jacket? No? Well, we'll leave it at reception. Okay. Or Mary can take it home, one of the two. Mary, have you got time for a couple of sure. questions? Yep. Okay, sure. my first question would be, if I was thinking about going to a workshop tomorrow at maybe 1.30, uh, which workshop would I want to go to? 
Uh, well, I personally am planning on going to the collaborative learning workshop because there you're going to have a taster of uh, one of the modules in the Moodle Educator Certification Programme. Obviously, it's a lot shorter and condensed because we only have an hour and a half, and we're doing it live as opposed to um, facilitated online, but you will get an idea of the flavour of it, of the introduction and the acts and the reflections, um, so that's going to be my choice anyway. And you're leading that one. Excellent. Um, Bats, could you grab the other microphone just before Mary escapes? Because um, I'm sure there's some questions from the audience. Does anyone have a question for Mary based on what she's just been presenting about? This is a cha change to answer questions instead of running around with the microphone. So there you yes. go. It's a question here. Here we go. Uh, I know you're not even rolled it out yet, but I think from a perspective of being a, a university and having a whole load of staff that we'd love to upskill to the, the same level, will there be some thought about potentially how um, potentially non-Moodle partners could be certified trainers in this to allow us to do it out that way? We can't be a Moodle partner because we're a university as far as I'm aware, um, so it's sort of how do you train the trainers to, or will there be some sort of thought about training the trainers? Yes, I think the answer to that is, is there is some thinking going into having um, someone in your organisation as a qualified trainer, uh, facilitator rather, I say facilitator, but they'd still have to go via a Moodle partner first. But I actually have an idea that that's one of the FAQ in that link that I gave you. So uh, have a look on there. Okay. Thanks Mary. Any other questions? Oh, Bas, could yeah, you just go up there I think? put my glasses on so I can see you actually. Oh, wow. Hello. Mary, can I ask, is this going to be a one-off qualification or is this something that you're going to have, say, for a two to three year period and you're going to have to renew? Uh, well, that's interesting. I, 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 my belief is that um, it's going to be a qualification based on certain Oh, actually, no, I don't know, because it will be updated for each Moodle version, right? Or maybe once a year for every, every other version. But certainly, the qualification in terms of the digital competencies is not changed. I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. Well, can I just say that the European Digicom framework gets updated, and in fact, the UNESCO um, worldwide digital literacy skills um, framework is going to build on the Digicom framework. So I should imagine that it will reflect yeah. all of yeah. that. I mean, yeah. it makes sense that way. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to say the link um, doesn't actually go to a page. It looks like it's got a dash between learn. Um, Which, um, do you mean that one? Yeah, it looks like it's got a dash between learn and Moodle. Without the dash, oh, it's not no, resolving. There's, it, no, there's no dash. Well, it's Sorry, to, I don't know what you mean. It's going to a page not found. Isn't it? Okay. You mean there's a hyphen between the N and the M? Yes. yes. Mm. Okay. I'll have a look afterwards. Well, I'll have a look now, actually. While Mo does that, any other questions? No? Oh, there's one here. Let me just run up. There's two here. Let me go to the closest one. Mary, will the, um, will the successful uh, people who've succeeded through the course have any accreditation that they can claim for it? Are you having it looked at by any university partners? I or think anything? they're working towards... Yeah, you'll get certificate, you'll get badges. Um, I think they're working towards uh, different accreditations and I am sure that that is in the FAQ. Actually... Um, Thanks. Hmm. This was... Yeah, this was working, so... Oh, thank you, thank you. So who else was there? Thank you. Um, this is really interesting for us. We've been asked to look into reviewing the VLE that we're using. Um, and probably something like the Learn Moodle project would be one way of us saying, no, please, let's not move. <laughs> We've got this new training we can offer. But um, just wondering about 
um, pricing and things, I know that's probably a bit far away, but if it's going through the partners, and obviously we'll have to pay for it, do we know if it would be something like an institutional subscription or per user or... Or you don't know yet? I don't know yet. I'm sorry. I'm actually... The, the, learn, the moodle.com slash learn moodle link is a canonical URL, which I only learned from Doug a few months ago, actually, that term. So I'm saying it to sound cool. Is uh, from the documentation. So the page is actually in the Moodle documentation, so I'm just looking that up now, actually. Uh, yeah. Okay, any last questions for Mary before you li listen to my dulcet tones? No? No? Okay, then. Well, while we're switching over, can we just give Mary a, a round of applause? Thank you, Mary. Thank you. While we're switching over, sorry, I can't really walk backwards. I haven't got my.